OK, welcome everyone to the ALG summer webinar series. Thank you so much for joining us or if you're watching the recording, thank you for watching. Today we are hearing from Nikki Cannon Rutch from Georgia Southern University on Share and Share Alike, a guide to Creative Commons licenses. Uh, again, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat and uh, we will uh, present them to Nikki um, and there will also be opportunities for participation if you'd like to use your microphone at that time. Uh, so if you are ready, the floor is yours. Thank you so much and thank you everyone who is joining us today. This is going to be just a general introduction to the Creative Commons or CC license group, um, particularly in how they pertain to open educational resources. So a little bit of things that you can share with your faculty if you happen to be a librarian. And if we happen to be lucky enough to have any faculty with us, hopefully this will clear up any of the questions you might have about that interesting little CC that you sometimes see on works. So during today we're going to do just a quick activity and because we are virtual, I'm just going to trust everyone to um, work along with us in any way that you can. We're going to talk about the rules for reuse. How much are you willing for folks to do with anything that you might create? Um, go over the different CC licenses. What are they and how do they work? And always end with the um, website to creativecommons.org where you can learn more if you need to and want to. Um, and feel free, as Tiffany said, to interrupt at any point to ask questions or participate. Slides are not moving forward for some reason. Oh, there we go. Okay, so first we're going to get creative, and wherever you are, just grab a pencil or pen and create any kind of image representing your favorite food. In all honesty, you can even pull up an image on your phone as long as you actually took that image and it does not belong to somebody else. So I'm going to give everyone just a minute or so to do that. Um, nobody's going to see this except you, so don't worry about your artistic ability in any way, shape, or form. A quick scribble is just fine. You just need to have something basically that you have created. And I hope everyone is at least scribbling something or pulling something up on your phone, as I mentioned. Please feel free to share as we're going as to what your favorite food is. Um, I can tell you that mine happens to be tacos in just about any shape or form. Jeff, Tiffany, you want to share your favorite food with everyone? Well, I'm still drawing it, but uh, I'm trying to draw a chocolate bar. Chocolate definitely ranks right up there for most of us, I think. My chocolate bar looks like a skyscraper skyscraper with a lot of uh, windows. <laughs> it's perfect, right? <laughs> Means you can break apart and enjoy just a little nibble at a time. <laughs> All right, so as long as everybody has something down, we will move on with that. Now, you have created 
this work, whatever it is, whether again, it's a photograph that you've pulled up on your phone, or if you've taken the time to do a quick sketch of something, this work is yours. And so by default, you own the copyright of this work. So this is one of the important things about CC license. And I've noticed something that a lot of my faculty really get confused about when it comes to the CC license suite. They're completely afraid of giving up their copyright in whatever form that might be. And it's important to note that anything with a CC license has to be a copyrightable work. So CC works in conjunction with copyright. It doesn't take the place of copyright. So you own the copyright to whatever you have just created. So you're going to want to create a title for your work. You are the creator. And then determine where you're going to let this piece of work live, whether you're going to scan it if it's not already digital and put it out there, or if you're going to keep it in a physical space somewhere, what are you going to do with that particular work that you have created? Are you going to try to publish it in some other work, publish it solo, share it out with folks, whatever? So then the decisions you also want to make is what are you willing to allow others to do with this work? So in the case of Tiffany's chocolate bar, what are you willing to allow other people to do with this work? Are you willing to let them use it in some way? Are you willing to let them share it out with other folks? Are you willing for them to adapt this work in some way? So if they happen to like chocolate with almonds, can they add some almonds into your chocolate bar? Can they break it apart and combine it with something else? Can they completely transform it and maybe take this drawing and turn it into a song about the chocolate bar or something of that nature? What are you want, willing to allow others to do with your work? So if you'll take just a moment again and think about that and kind of maybe jot down some of the things that you're willing for other people to do with this work that you have just created. Everyone is free to use my chocolate bar to create a skyscraper with a lot of windows. If they can nibble on it as they're living in it, that would make it even better. You do have uh, participation in the chat, just so you know. We have lots of uh, favorite foods in the chat right now, so. Fantastic, and I apologize, y'all. I cannot see that because I am on a laptop at my home and not at work. Right, so hopefully you've been able to think a little bit about what you are willing to allow others to do with this work. And at the same time, I do want you to realize that you still retain 100% of the copyright of that work, regardless of what you're allowing others to do with it. So Tiffany still is the copyright owner of her skyscraper with lots of windows chocolate bar. So this is where Creative Commons comes in because this is what Creative Commons does. It allows the copyright owner to decide how others are going to use their work. And this way other people who want to use the work do not have to contact them and ask these questions. Based on the Creative Commons license assigned to this work, they immediately allow other people to know what they're allowed to do with this work. So meet the CC group. There are six general Creative Commons license that you can choose for the work that you've now created based on what you're willing to allow others to do with that. So Tiffany has already let us know that persons can do whatever they want with her chocolate bar representation that she has created. So the Creative Commons license she would typically choose for that 
is the first CC BY. And this basically means that persons can do whatever they want with it. They can retain a copy of it. They can share it out with whomever they'd like in any fashion that they want. They can tweak it, change it, adapt it in any way that they want to. They can combine it with other things if they want to. All they have to do is provide attribution to Tiffany as the original creator of that work, and they're free to do whatever they'd like to do by it. And then our other groups might have a few more restrictions on them based on what you're willing to allow others to do. So you see our next one is CC by SA or CC by share alike. Basically the same as the one before, you have to provide attribution. You're allowed to do whatever you want to do with that particular group or allowing others to do it, but you're simply asking that it be shared out with the same license so that others can then take that work and do what they want to do with it. We go a little further down, CC by ND. The ND means no derivatives, so you're saying, you know what, I don't want you to change it anyway. I think the way I created this is perfect. It is what it is. It's meant to be used this way. So I really don't want you to change things. So you can use it as it is. You can share it out as it is. You can retain a copy of it. Obviously you provide attribution, but I don't want you changing it in any way. I've created this and I want it to stay this way. We have CC by non-commercial next or NC. So you can do whatever again, provide the attribution to the original creator, but it cannot be used for any kind of commercial activities. And I will tell you that my faculty also get a little bit confused about this one because they automatically think of some corporation or something like that making huge profits off of their work. And I just want to make it clear that non-commercial means it can't be sold in any way by somebody else. So if you've taken that fantastic photo that you took off your phone of your favorite food item and your civic organization that you work with decides they're going to make a great calendar of food of the months and they want to use your photo, but they're going to sell this calendar for say $3 and use that money to go into funds for the civic organization. They can't use your photo if you've put a non-commercial CC license on it because you have plainly stated that it cannot be used in any kind of commercial fashion. And so any, even though they're only selling it for $3 and you think the money's going for a good cause, they can't use your work if you've put that NC on it. A lot of our um, faculty here put together little lab manuals, especially in the STEM groups, and they sell them to the students for a very, very minimal cost in order to buy some extra supplies for the lab. Something with a non-commercial license on it could not be used for that if they're selling it to those students, okay? So our next one is CC by non-commercial share alike. So again, same as before, you can't sell it off in any way, and they're asking you to sell, put it out there with the same license on it. So nobody else after can use it in any commercial fashion. And then the most closed or the one with the most restriction on it is CC by non-commercial, no derivatives. So can't use it in any kind of commercial fashion and also can't change it in any way. No derivatives are allowed from it. Now again, since you created this work, I want to make it clear that you can still do all of these things. So Tiffany can take this image of this chocolate bar that she has created and she can sell it if she wants to. She can make derivatives of it anytime she wants to because she still owns the copyright, but I can't take her work and sell it if she put one of these more restrictive license on it. So hoping that makes sense to everybody. Again, I can't see the chat. If you have any questions, please feel free to chime in. No questions right now. I'm not sure what, there we go. So you can see a very- 
Can you explain, please, what is share it with Sam? It's not clear. OK, say that again. Share it with Sam. Uh, CC by. And then the next one says share it with Sam. And that's not clear. Please explain. OK, you're talking about the first one, the CC by? The second one, the second one. The second one, CC by share alike. Share alike, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Share alike means it's asking you to put the exact same Creative Commons license on it when you put it out there again for any reason. So you share the persons or your, your own. When you share your own, you have to put the other person also. Okay, I apologize. You're breaking up a little bit through my laptop. Tiffany, um, Jeff, are you hearing the question a little better than I am? Uh, yeah, so I I think uh, I think he's asking uh, if they need to uh, include your yourself and the original. Uh, we also have a a chat. We have a, a comment in the chat. Um, no, you share it how it was originally shared. You can't lock it down. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And apologies, thank you all for helping out. The laptop is not quite as robust in the speakers as my computer at home. Do you have um? Do you have maybe an example that might help explain that one? Um, we have a request in the chat for that. I am sure I do somewhere, and I'm happy to share it out after this particular session, and it can go along with it. I'm not sure I've worked one into this presentation, but that's a really good question. And the slide you're looking at now, it's just a diagram that you will often see used by several people that break this down um, by the most open and the least open of these licenses. So obviously we all know that the public domain lives out there. You can do whatever. And then the CC by pretty much same thing. You can do whatever to that. And as you go down, you get more closed or more restrictive, which as I said, the CC by non-commercial no derivative is probably one of the most restrictive. So basically you're allowing people to use it as it is no commercial possibilities whatsoever. So it can be used in your classroom setting with your students without any concerns whatsoever. You just can't make any kind of changes to that or derivatives, and you can't use it for any kind of commercial purposes. Okay, so the CC license help with the five R's of OER, if you are familiar with those. So the five R's of OER tell us that we can retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute any kind of work. And again, for the work you've created, you are allowing other users to do this. But if you happen to be a librarian or a faculty member and you're looking for resources to use, knowing about these licenses lets you know what you and or your faculty are allowed to do with these particular works. So the CC BY that Tiffany put on her skyscraper allows all of the five R's to be used in all of their glory. So if I find her work and I'm like, I want to use this in my classroom talking about chocolate and all of its formations, I can retain a copy of it for myself and for my students. I can reuse it in any way. So I could create some sort of game with it for my students to learn from it. I can use it in my PowerPoint slides. I can place it in any other kind of course materials that I have, my learning management system or any of those things. Again, I can remix it so I can combine it with other things. Say I want a lovely um, video image of a chocolate bar to go with it or something of that nature. I can do that and then I can redistribute it as well so I can share it out on my website. I can again share it out on my PowerPoint slides. I can make copies of it for my students and share it out for them that way. 
I can redistribute it in any way that is functional and efficient for the work that I am doing. And as you go down from the other license, some of these five R's you would not be allowed to do. So if it has a non derivative or ND on it, you're not going to be able to revise it in any way. You're not going to be able to remix it in any way. If it has the non commercial, you can redistribute it. You just can't redistribute it and charge anything for it at all. We have a question in the chat. Um, so if you're trying to get the most sharing for free, would it be best to use CC by SA or CC zero? The most sharing, in all honesty, the most open is simply CC by. Because again, um, it just allows people to do anything of it. Now, of course, if you put that CC by share alike, it simply means that the next people have to put that same license on it. So they're kind of a little bit equal in that way. You're making sure that the next people who do use it, no matter what they use, are going to share alike. Now, of course, remember that if they completely revise, revamp, adapt your original work, Yes, they're putting it out there as a share alike, but it may not have any semblance whatsoever to what you originally created. So. Just be aware of that um, just because you have the share alike on there with the CC by you're allowing other people to do whatever they want with that work. So what goes out there afterwards may not resemble your original work at all. And most of the time when people put it out there within their attribution, they will try to lead back to that original work as they can. Um, there are ways to say that this work is an adaptation or a revision of. Chocolate or skyscraper chocolate bar by Tiffany Reardon, so you're going to be able to. See the work that you're working with, obviously. But they'll also try to lead you back to that original work. So maybe you don't like some of the revisions or adaptations that somebody made of Tiffany's chocolate bar skyscraper. It allows you to go back to that original work. So that you can do what you need to with that original work or maybe see exactly what was changed, which might be important depending on how you want to use it, what course you want to use it in, or how you also might want to adapt it. Does that make sense? Tiffany has stepped away for a moment, so I'll jump in and say yes, that, that does make sense. Yeah, okay. sorry, I had audio issues and had to restart. Sorry about that, I'm back now. No, that's fine. Um, Y'all not gonna lie, I find teams a little bit unnerving in this format because you see nothing and it's like you're speaking out to the complete void. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little bizarre. So you can learn much more at creativecommons.org. It is a wonderful site that will allow you to see other works that you can use. But what I've loved about it for a long time is that creativecommons.org will help you determine the proper license for your particular work. They have a few questions that you answer just like we did based on what you want others to be allowed to do with your work, and then it will tell you which one of their license best fits what you are wanting to do and how you're wanting to share your work out. And of course, that is always if you have created something or if your faculty have created something. The biggest thing with CC that um, I think most of us see in our OER work with our institutions is helping faculty determine how they can use works that already have these license applied to them. So that's the important thing to remember. You can mix and match these to certain degrees 
it's just important to remember um, the restrictions placed on possibly any of them, especially if you have a non derivative on there. But it helps you let your faculty know how they're able to use these works that they find, which ones are going to be the easiest if they need to adapt or revise them in any way, shape or form. If they're strictly looking to adopt and they don't need to change anything or don't want to change anything, and there are some OER out there that fit the bill that faculty are looking for without needing to change a thing, which is fantastic. It makes it incredibly easy for faculty to explore using these works in their courses. And in that case, you know, the main thing you have to worry about is if they have a share alike on there and they have to put it out there with the exact same license, basically. But if they're simply going to adopt it and not change it in any way, shape or form, most of these work. If they're going to be needing to do some revising, adapting, if they're hoping to combine resources because they haven't been able to find one resource that just fits what they need for their class, this is where knowing how these CC license work is going to be the most beneficial for them and beneficial for you in guiding them in choosing the works that will work best for their class. Any questions, concerns, comments? Sorry, now that I was able to restart this. Um, yeah, I had just a, a thing about the whether to use share alike or to use something like a public domain license to uh, enable the most sharing for free. It's a really interesting one. Like the it, putting a public domain license makes it extremely usable, but then people who are using that thing that you made, um, they are not passing along that open licensing, or at least they they don't have to. Whereas with share alike, you pass on that responsibility in kind of the old uh, open software uh, tradition. But if you do that, then you are uh, putting some learning and responsibility onto people who may not have the time for it. So it's a, it's a give and take for sure. Yes, it's also very important that all of the CC license do require attribution. Okay? Yeah. They do require you to um, give attribution to the original creator. Now, except I think, for zero, because zero is weird. <laughs> yeah, and but I think most of us would with any item within the public yeah. domain, simply because we're you know we're in a profession, especially that really pushes that, tries to teach it, tries to model it. It's kind of in our core, but. I've seen a whole lot of people use public domain works and never tell you where they get it. Yeah, and of course it's also kind of up to the public domain creator and then the host if it's not that creator to make that clear too. Mm -hmm. Like there are some places that have really good public domain stuff and they'll they'll let you know how they want it cited, which is cool. Uh, so that you in good faith can then put that citation down. But someone else could then take that public domain thing, move it somewhere else. The other public domain thing could shut down and then you're left with nothing but a public domain license picture and not a title, not the author, not nothing. And so then all of a sudden, yeah, if people don't tell you where they found it, um, it it's tough to then pass that citation along too, that attribution. Indeed, so it can get a little tricky in those aspects. I think it works for photos, for vector graphics, for stuff that um, you may not necessarily need an attribution going back to the original. Uh, you know, like somebody made this protractor over here on the slide and that's, you don't have to then say, okay, well, you know, here's the artist that made this vector image because they just put it out there so people can use it. Uh, but if you wrote an open textbook, I don't think putting it in the public domain works very well because then 
who knows how it's going to be shared. And at that point, you may not even be able to trace it back to the original, which brings about a whole bunch of problems. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm a stickler and I like to put that share alike on any of the work I do simply because I do want folks to continue sharing with an open license. But that original CC by, like I said, is just basically as, as open as you can make it. So folks could then take whatever they have created and not put any kind of Creative Commons license on it whatsoever and simply have it with, you know, full, complete copyrights. And therefore someone, if they wanted to use it, would need to contact them and ask permission. And I think in academia, if we haven't done it ourselves, we all know some faculty who have gone that route, who have wanted to use um, the copyrighted work from another person in their discipline, and they have contacted that person and said, may I do such and such? And if they actually have a current contact information and can track them down, I think in most cases, they get permission to do what they're wanting to do, um, obviously that person absolutely has the right to say, nope, sorry, don't want you to do that. The bigger thing I think is tracking them down because often the information you find can be outdated. The person has moved on again or is at a different institution entirely or whatever. And so it can be a bit of a chore to actually track down whoever owns the copyright and ask that permission. Yeah, uh, Lucy's talking about mark records too, and that's that's a good point. There's some libraries releasing them with a CC zero license, and uh, in some ways that makes them very interoperable. It's it's that kind of utility usability thing that comes with having them in the public domain. But yeah, if you if you took those and you could literally take a public domain licensed thing and just sell it as is um, you, you wouldn't even have to enhance it uh, but yeah if you you could sell and prevent further reuse if it is in the public domain because there's no rights reserved but cc by you at least have to um, you have to attribute the original work the publishers uh, of stuff that surrounds open stacks materials can sometimes be kind of cagey about how they cite those texts later on uh, that's been a, a tough thing about it. Um, but yeah, it, and then like things like non-commercial wind up. Uh, sometimes I was just thinking, well, if you're talking about education, you want to share things between folks, putting extra restrictions on it can make it not as easy to use. But we had a series of open historical games that uh, kind of came from a movement and wound up later being published by Norton and then became its own thing that they publish independently, but Norton still publishes them called Reacting to the Past. And uh, some of the folks who were thinking about sharing these openly, they were rightfully concerned that Norton could just walk in and, uh, you know, just publish their stuff as their own. If So we had to kind of talk about all of this, how Creative Commons licenses worked, why you would pick one over the other, um, and why a non-commercial license might actually work out better for these folks in particular. And Terry says, yeah, it's really important to provide a citation and attribution to the original scores for scholarly purposes. You wouldn't want the appearance of plagiarism, um, yeah, and also for educators to model citation and attribution behavior for students. One of the coolest things um, I've read in a while was on the fair use guidelines that uh, Will Cross and his team came uh, through with. Um, let me see here. Let's see. Best practices for fair use in, yep, code of best practices for fair use in open educational resources. Now, of course, fair use is not <laughs> going into what Creative Commons is about, but it it has to do with copyright and one of the things that they um, that they mentioned was that fair use has to do 
also with why we can quote and cite things that that all falls under fair use as well that um, our attributions of small passages and things in order to build on them and build on knowledge and transform it that all is part of fair use citations are just as much a part of it as uh, as anything so i thought that that was a, a really neat uh, look it, it, it's something that maybe we knew by default in the copyright worlds, but uh, as people who taught how to cite in so many different ways in you know, to so many different students as librarians, uh, I just I didn't know that we were engaging with fair use that whole time. Yeah, and that that is an amazing work that you did mention, Jeff, so I appreciate you. Um, you said you've put it in the chat. Yeah, although the URL is a little weird, but it does bring it to the right place. Oh, okay. yep. Uh, Dr. Rivera says some PowerPoint slides are shared, but the slides are derived from the OpenStax textbook. Do I attribute the slides if I use it in your course in D2L? You use the same textbook. I would attribute the slides. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you just have an attributions section or module in your D2L course so that people know where it came from in some way. Uh, that way, like, let's say that you're using seven different uh, PowerPoint slide files. You wouldn't have to go back and then do the attributions in each. You could then at least have a section in your D2L course where you provide um, the attribution to OpenStax for creating the original PowerPoints for this one, this one, this one, this one. This one. Uh, however, however easy it is for you to do that, it, it's a good thing to do. Now it is a closed in course and your your students are using materials for educational purposes within a closed system. A lot of people used to think that even that would just qualify under fair use. It, it's a little questionable now, but. I would just attribute OpenStax stuff anyway. It's it's nice even for students to just take a look at it and be like, oh, wow, hey, this is this is neat. Also, there's ones for concepts of physics and uh, algebra and trigonometry and all this stuff. What if I just check all of that? It's very true. It can lead them to other resources, as said, and it's just it's just a courteous and respectful habit to get into. Yeah, you know, if you're pulling from these. Just go ahead and attribute. You can even have um, you can have it in D2L or even a single slide at the end of the PowerPoint where you've changed it, just attributing what needs to be attributed. Um, some of my faculty have done that on their OER creations. Just at the beginning, they'll basically have an attribution section, as mentioned, where they tell you exactly where they um, pulled the material, what they adapted from, what they changed it, what things of that nature. So. And absolutely, if you're sharing it out to the public beyond your class, you really want to make sure those attributions are there. Um, it's all great stuff. Like I said, um, the one thing that kept surprising me over and over was how many of my faculty were truly concerned about CC because they thought they would be giving up their copyrights to material that they created. So ah. that's the main thing I try to get across to them now from the very beginning is that copyright and the CC license work in conjunction with each other simply because you place a Creative Commons license on a work you create, you do not give up any of your copyrights. You're simply letting others know how they can use the material you have created. You 100% retain all of the original copyrights. And again, as I mentioned, as the copyright holder, your faculty can do those things that maybe they're telling others they cannot do. So if they want to place an ND, no derivatives on their work, if they're the creator and they own the original copyright, 
they can absolutely make derivatives of that work at any time they want to. So this was a thing that was really confusing my faculty, and it's been the one thing that I have to make clear at the beginning. And then they start to really understand kind of the CC and how they are able to use other works again without having to go through that process, which can be a real chore of tracking down and asking permission because the permission has already been given. Yeah, it was at Georgia Southern that uh, the best example of this happens, which was uh, Konstantin uh, Ogloblin's group. They had an economics thing that they implemented, and then they wanted to go on and, and make something more enhanced, something kind of password protected and web based. And at first they thought they were going to be giving away all of that stuff. And I was like, no, 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 they they can totally do that. They've they've made these. We can share out the OER that they've made, uh, but the new stuff, the stuff that they want to do with it later, they can. Absolutely. Any additional questions or comments from anyone? And if we missed any of your questions in the chat, please feel free to put them back in. I tried to keep up with them, but. We have Hi, one. Sonia. Um, so this is the this is CC by in its current form, the 4.0 International one. Um, do you have a particular question about it? Because the actual licenses, they're they're pretty long. <laughs> Yeah, and a great question, Sonia, because sometimes you might find a work that says attribution 2.0, and that simply oh, means yeah. it's an older version of the license. Be careful about ones that go 1.0 and 2.0 because some of the wording in, oh, okay, regarding 4.0. Yeah, so Creative Commons has tried to make things a lot more uh, interoperable and long lasting over the years. You know, they, they tried to make something very clear in their first iteration on, on their 1.0 licenses, but they were very like machine locked kind of things. It was to get to where they are now, they had to do a lot of thinking and talk with a lot of people. So 1.0 and 2.0 have a couple of wording loopholes that can uh, lead to stuff being exploited later. Uh, it's a it's a really weird thing. Uh, Corey Doctorow had an article on uh, a company that was using Creative Commons 2.0 licenses to basically have you use it and then they would remove the protections from it and then say you were infringing on copyright. Like it was it was really silly. But basically, you would not want to put anything new under anything that's under 3.0. Uh, mm -hmm. 2.0 and 1.0 have some problems that they've gotten past. Uh, the more that, that the differences between 3.0 and 4.0, I think, are just ones that make Creative Commons licenses a bit more general and uh, just let you do what you want with them a lot more than before. Uh, yeah, I would say just as a broad practice, if it's 3.0 or 4.0, totally fine. If it's 2.0 or 1.0, you might want to uh, see if you could find a way to update it. Uh, yeah, but don't release your own stuff under 1.0 and 2.0. And if you're on creativecommons.org going through their questions to determine the license, it's going to automatically assign their most current license to that. OK, yeah, this is the cautionary tale about uh, the 2.0 license. And now your faculty, if they find something with a 
they still probably can use it in their courses just fine. Yeah, Cory Doctorow is an author, and that's a different kind of thing. So just another thing to keep in mind is that Creative Commons is always working to stay up to date. So um, they notify when they make changes to things, check their website frequently. They also have, um, help me out here, Jeff, there's a Creative Commons option for your browser. Oh, there's probably a plugin. I don't use that though. Yeah. I just use the chooser myself. Um, this wiki article on the licensed versions lets you know all the differences between them. Um, some of these have to do with compliance with uh, European Union stuff and other laws that are not in the US. And that's kind of part mm -hmm. of it is that 1.0, 2.0 and 2.5 were very US centric. Um, the newer ones are. Uh, they're they're applicable to more countries than just the US. There's also a Creative Commons certification that you can go through if you're interested in it. They offer it quite regularly. I believe they also make their materials fully open so you can view and read and go through the materials they use for that without actually going through the um, certification course if you want to. And they have some awesome stuff on there that goes through this and walks you through it and is definitely when it comes to derivatives and what that can actually mean and how that works and how that might change something. Do we have any other questions? Well, did you want to add anything else, Nikki, before we close out? Um, just thank you all for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer, um, whatever it may be. And thank you, Nikki, for doing this uh, workshop with us. Um, this uh, summer workshop series was sort of a new thing, so it's actually really great to hear from the champions on these presentations. Um, for those of you who have attended live um, or are watching the recording, there are there is also an archive of our previous session and uh, some information about our July session on the website. So uh, keep an eye on that and uh, I think that's about it. I'll go ahead and stop our recording. <laughs>